What's happening, cuz? Smoke yours, nigga. Sugar and Toys on Fuse TV. Get your cripping up and watch that shit. Sugar and Toys, Sugar and Toys, Sugar and Toys, Sugar and Toys, Sugar and Toys. Sugar and toys. Here we uh, are, man. Episode two, Sugar and Toys. I thought it'd be yeah. cool if we took this opportunity to mansplain some of the jokes and ideas behind the show. Uh, this actually, episode two of Sugar and Toys definitely is in my top three favorite episodes of the entire season. And I'm not even saying wow. that in a joking way. Uh, has amazing stuff in it. We got uh, we got uh, Cameron from Dormtainment together with Kyle. We got Slink Johnson um, playing a hype man, killing it. Um, yes. And we got some really just wild, interesting, funny segments in this piece that you know that I just love to death. So let's get into it. Appropriation dolls. Love appropriation dolls. Little girls in that spot. They they murdered it. They were so good. They really did. Um, and then just the whole conversation that's been happening over the last bunch of years about cultural appropriation and it's it's such a hot button topic that it just felt like the idea of of, of looking at it through the eyes of children again something that we kind of wanted to do with this sort of Saturday morning format. Right, right. Is the idea of having these two little white girls very naively feeling entitled to do these things with their doll. Turn that tea party into a barbecue by throwing on a head wrap and working on your black scent. <laughs> Girl, these n ain't shit. I'm a bad bitch. <laughs> People doing it don't even yeah. realize what they're doing yeah. Yeah. And, and how wrong it was. And then, you know. Because they felt th really comfortable even reading all those lines. Like, like, they had no idea why this may even be offensive. So next, we have, like, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite sketches, One Eye and the Owl. Are they brothers, One Eye and the Owl? I never figured that out, because I know their parents are, are lizard people. They're they absolutely don't... brothers. They're definitely brothers. Yeah, they're absolutely brothers. They're brothers in the Illuminati. Brother, okay. Not, like, flesh and blood brothers. No. So you got to think, like, more esoteric. It's These are, like, you know, evil brotherhood, secret society brothers. Oh, and then the fact that we also sent them to, like, a historically black college. You are so paranoid. Everybody knows ain't no such thing as Illuminati. Yeah, no such thing. The Illuminati is a buzzword that can be used to, I mean, depending on how you how you look at it, uh, there, there's some really conspiracy-oriented people that kind of believe in the X-Files version of it, where it's just anything that's mysterious and conspiratorial. But we did have a lot of fun with the Drizzy sketch. You know, when we started doing the show, I was thinking, like, we have to find a way to, like, take all of these, like, really soft, sweet, nice guy memes that we see all the time with, with Drake and, you know, make it into a sketch. And the name of the nigga is Drizzy! <laughs> we did a few different Drake pieces, but this one is the funniest to me because, like, just, like, going to the barbershop all the time, and there's, like, this unwritten rule that you ne while you're getting your edge up, you never look at the barber in his eyes. You can look up at the ceiling, you can look at the ground, you could, I mean, you could, I usually close my eyes and just, <laughs> but I can still kind of see them in my mental mind, <laughs> so it still fucks with me. Drizzy, what? you're dog? doing it again, no, man. I wasn't. Do not look me in Come my on, eyes. Dog. I just, all right, okay, you you my dog, dog. As much fun as it is to talk to you about these shows, we got someone really special coming in here today, and I'm really excited about it. Anytime I see him, it's always a good time. Who could that be? <laughs> Smoke you, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> What's up, man? Oh, man, what what's up? up, man? I don't sit next to niggas with no socks on, man. Why you ain't got no socks on, bro? <laughs> sit next to Brian like that, dog. I, I would have right, brought right, you right. some socks, dog. But come right, on, man. All right, all right, I'm You moving. got your little bohemian thing I'm going on, man. I'm you woke. Moving. You woke, huh? <laughs> socks is the white man's ploy to keep our feet fun confined. All right, so anyone yeah. who doesn't know, uh, Slink Johnson, one of the funniest people that we know. The man, the myth, the legend, Black Jesus. What's happening? Yeah. Hype man. What's happening, y'all? <laughs> All my niggas in this motherfucker! Hell yeah! Anytime we have an opportunity to work with Slink, it's just a fucking pleasure, just like the funniest fucking person in the world. So when we put together this ensemble for Sugar and Toys, uh, we always have a place for Slink. We were super excited when he came on board. Awesome. I mean, you already are kind of like the ultimate hype man anyway. So like, you you know, I'm sure it wasn't like a stretch. Hype man's just super turnt all the time. He's, <laughs> he's, he's turnt about everything, whatever. You know, pancakes, pancakes! <laughs> Put some maple syrup on the motherfuckers. So, you know, hey, it's not a far cry for me because I be hyped about shit. I'm just hyped to be alive. I'm hyped to be here, man. We at Fuse TV, man. Right, right. But uh, uh, shooting Hype Man, we also did it live on set, which was also kind of an interesting experience because Kyle was holding this like little action figure but you were but like 
you know, two feet away from him <laughs> screaming in his yeah. face <laughs> right off camera. Like, what, what was that like doing the interplay between? It, it, uh, it was dope, man. Be it, I had to put myself into that action figure, you know, for lack of better words. And, you know, it, it was it's definitely a different experience than doing voice acting inside a booth and doing, you know, just straight up acting in front of the camera. And it was dope, you know, working with Kyle and, you know, I just didn't like the way he was holding my character too much. He was squeezing too hard, you know what I'm saying? Don't be squeezing my nigga like that. Just working with you for as long as we have, like, of any actor we work with, you're like the king of the ad-libs. I wish we could take the credit for half the shit you say <laughs> in the booth and on camera, dude. Like, yeah, you come up with some shit we would never be able to imagine. My favorite line, man, was the one where two grown men are having a fight over the free toy that comes in a cereal box, and the cereal box toy kind of comes alive, and it's and it's the voice of Slink. And uh, the Kyle's crying to his friend. He tries to admit to his friend, he's like, I'm sorry, man. I was just being a real dick. I guess I and out of nowhere, you just go, a big old dick like the one I got. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and you got to see the visual, because it's like this figure is like that big. Yeah. And he's just all hyped on how big his dick is. Yeah, man. Hype man was, was fucking hilarious. And you also was in our um, Blues Clues parody sketch called Clues Clues. Man. And, ah, oh, that was so dope. How could I not be involved in that? All these kids I got, I came up watching Blue's Clues, too. <laughs> so to, to have an opportunity to, to, to parody, yeah. you know, Blue's Clues, especially with some magnificent cripping, right, you right, know right. what I'm saying? That shit is outstanding. What's happening, though, huh? He's right there! I, I just remember, like, growing up as a kid, seeing these cartoons that didn't really show the environment that I actually lived in. Mm. So, like, we thought it would be funny, like, so what if we took this idea of Blue's Clues, but we, like, set it in, like, the jungle. My inspiration for Clue the Dog was Snoop. He's a dog. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? Again, that was probably my horrible Snoop impersonation. <laughs> However, you know, again, he's a dog and he's a blue dog, a Clue dog. So, you know, and plus right, I'm right. an Iron Sheik of Crippin. Hold on. Back. <laughs> Read his LinkedIn, it says so. What I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, who's more qualified to do it than me? You know what I'm saying? Uh, when it comes to this cripping in Hollywood, you know, there's no there's no other expert. Next, I'm going over to Luxembourg to try to teach them people proper cripping etiquette. You know, they got it all fucked up in Paris. <laughs> but I'm going to start in Luxembourg, and then I'm going to head over to Paris to show the Parisians how to crip right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so I guess we should move on to the next sketch, um, Meme Girls. And Meme Girls is kind of like, I guess, like a public service announcement for bullying. You know what I mean? And, like, so we thought it would be funny if you took, like, I don't know, like the most popular memes and turned them actually into like bullies. So we took Whoa Vicky and um, Black Girl What. I don't know what it is, but she is just so funny to me, man. Whoa Vicky is like. Well, the personality is, of the real Whoa Vicky is just so, you know, when you get into these conversations about cultural appropriation, about yeah. identity, she is so unapologetic. I think she's serious. Like, it's not like, I don't even know that she's aware that she's doing it. Look how I'm sick and tired of telling your ass what race I am. I I'm black, B-L-A, in the story, bitch. Yeah, this was fun, man. You know, it's always fun hanging out with you, man. Always, always, always. man. Always a pleasure. Always, always man. Pleasure. Yeah, man. Sugar and toys. 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 Pack a bowl. Get the water. Pack a bowl. Get the ice. Pack a bowl. 